I don't know if you've noticed, but Tony Hawk is just killing it recently. He just had a Joe Rogan podcast. He has a video game coming out. He had a master class. If any skateboarder in the world is murdering it the hardest, Tony Hawk, obviously, always. So today I'm gonna talk about the day that I met him, but it wasn't just that. We went street skateboarding together and it set the projection for my entire career and my life ahead of me, all thanks to this day of meeting Mr. Hawk himself. Now, like a lot of kids my age, I grew up on Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. That's actually how I got into skateboarding. So of course, he was my idol. He was the first person that I ever wanted to be like outside of, you know, my dad as a kid. I read his autobiography. I played Tony Hawk's Pro Skater every single day. I started skateboarding every single day. At 10 years old, he had already set the projection basically for my life up to the next 20 years. Needless to say, I have an immense love for him. So the day our local skate shop in Columbia, South Carolina hit me up and said, Birdhouse is coming to town. We need some people to show them around. What are you up to? I panicked. Even today, I have a decent amount of anxiety for meeting new people and things like that. But at that time, I was a thousand times worse. I almost didn't do it. But luckily the day came and I had a couple friends who were like, yo, we're going out there regardless if you're coming or not. So you might as well tag along. So we met at my local skate park. It wasn't an organized session, but the first second somebody saw Tony Hogg, he looked out at the skate park and screamed, it's Tony Hawk! Even though there was only two other people there. Word got out really fast, so all of the local skaters in the area met up, came to the skate park, and they put on kind of a little demo. I was introducing myself to the riders because I was going to show them around, and David Loy was there, and he was like, hey, Tony, this is John Hill. And I can still remember to this day how nervous I was just to shake Tony Hawk's hand, but he was like, hey, nice to meet you. Shook my hand, he had glasses on or something, shades. Tony Hawk and his team were touring with a tech deck company and a yo-yo company. So all the footage that I'm showing in this video are actually from the yo-yo company themselves, and they would just include clips of the riders here and there, including myself. We started going off to this handrail that I've skated a lot of times, so for me, it was easy to have a good session on this thing. Clint Walker did a crook nollie flip, which was insane, and I had a pretty good session, and I think a lot of them were actually they were pretty juiced on how it was going. After that, we went to a classic skate spot in Columbia that a lot of tourists will come and skate. And the coolest part is I got to watch Tony Hawk board slide this handrail in person. And he did, second try right in front of my eyes. And I was like, yes. I actually had a really good session on that rail. I did a kickflip backside 50-50 down the rail, but I just never could find that footage. I know that Jaws also backtailed the rail and then Clive Dixon did a nollie nose grind, which is insane. Very productive session for the whole squad. After that, we went to this cool spot where it's a loading dock into a bank and Riley Hawk was there, the whole crew. I did an ollie heel into it. I think Riley Hawk did a faky frontside flip, but I, I don't really know where all this footage is now. I just know that these tricks happened. We ended up skating a lot together, and the truth is, I understood my scene at the time very well. So not only did I know the right spots to go to, but I knew how to utilize the spots near each other. I'd say if we go to this one area, we have three spots right there, you'll love all of them, let's go. So the tour was Birdhouse going from New York City to Florida and skating the whole East Coast along the way. In the article, there was about 12 photos, and 10 of those photos were from Columbia, South Carolina. That's how productive it was for the team. The last spot we skated where Tony Hawk actually showed up was this 14 stair hand it's been skated by a few people out of towners, but I know that Jaws did a crook down it and Clint Walker back 50 did it. It was a heavy session indeed, and then we got kicked out by cops, and of course they instantly recognized Tony Hawk. But in Columbia, South Carolina, skateboarding has never really been a cool thing anyway, so the cops, as freaked out as they were to see a celebrity, they still wrote all their names down and basically warned us never to come back. From there, we went to the hotel with them and Tony Hawk was in the restaurant just kind of mingling. The last bit of communication I really had with him was I, I said bye to him. I was like, later man. And he was like, bye. And that was it. Now I wish I could explain what it's like to come from Columbia, South Carolina, aspiring to do anything creative, especially skateboarding. Nobody famous ever comes through there. It really is one of the least creatively opportunistic cities in the country. South Carolina was pretty much ranked the worst in almost every category growing up. All these negative things in America South Carolina was always one of the worst and always tied with Alabama and Mississippi. It's the dirtiest of the South. Even though the city nurtured me and grew me, you, you can try to imagine what it's like for a kid from this city who just has zero expectations of ever doing anything with his life, all of a sudden one day skating with the Tony Hawk the most famous skateboarder in the world. It was monumental for me, and I basically rode on a high for weeks. Now, for most kids, the story would end there, but for me, I saw the opportunity. I instantly shot an email to the team manager, and I asked, could I ever be sponsored by Birdhouse? And he was like, dude, you ripped. 
you shredded, and the whole team liked you. And then he said, yes. He's like, if you wanna be on Birdhouse, we'll start hooking you up, I'll start sending you boards directly, and you can try to work your way up in the brand, and I have full faith that you can do it. I remember at the time, the home life was a little mixed up. My dad wasn't there, but I was visiting him in a different state, and I got the news when I was with him. But I remember at the time trying to explain like, hey dad, uh, I think my life just changed. So right after that, I was in Columbia and I was talking to my mom and I was just on a high. And then she stopped me and said, what are you trying to do? Like, what, what are you doing with your life? What, not in a negative way, just trying to get me to speak. And I sat there staring ahead and, and I finally could admit it. I was like, I wanna be a professional skateboarder. I worked my whole life, I skate constantly, it's always been in the back of my head, but I've just been too afraid to say it. And I grew up with a dragon type Korean mom, the ones that are very strict on their kids and very stick to the real world type vibe. But at that moment she said something that completely shocked me, but she said, do you need to talk to Tony Hawk? Do you need to reach out to these big people and get in their radar and hang out with them? And I was like, in all honesty, I probably should move to California but I know that's difficult. Because a lot of Korean mothers don't want their kids to leave home until they're going either to college or they have a very secure job. And she said, then go. Go right now. You need to chase your dreams. If you're not gonna do anything else, you need to go right now to California and pursue the thing you love the most. A Korean mom said that. It, wh what? That day, I called two friends and I said, we're moving to California. They said, a, -da a week and a half later, we were on the way to California. While I was out there, I was networking a lot, but since I was getting birdhouse boards, I was going to their warehouse a lot, which is Tony Hawk's half pipe. He was at the door one time when I walked in and I said, hey, uh, Tony, um, I'm here to see the team manager and he pointed me up and that was our second interaction. The stage for California was set when I went to the manager's office and they had a big window that showcased Tony Hawk's ramp. And then all of a sudden I see Tony Hawk go to the top of the ramp he gets a radio, starts playing it, and it's literally the Amoeba song from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. And then he continues to do his warm-up line, which is just this insane skate line that he does every single try. I mean, at this point, how did my head just not explode from sheer stokeness? A 10-year-old kid from a city where he thought nothing would ever happen is now watching Tony Hawk skate to a song from the Tony Hawk game that set the projection for the rest of his life, like, insane. Anyways, the story goes on and on and it, it gets crazier and crazier, but all of that led to me pursuing a career in skateboarding in California and actually eventually turning into a professional skateboarder. You can hear about what happened with the fallout with Birdhouse. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't very tragic, but it, you know, there was a fallout, but by that point, I was already in California growing a name for myself, so it wasn't really hard for me to kind of, you know, pick and choose. And of course, now I'm in New York City, I have a YouTube channel and blah, blah, blah. I mean, the, the, you know, it goes on and on. So Tony Hawk is very responsible for a lot of what happened in my life, and I, I'm just making this video kind of just for that and how, I, I mean, I just think that's crazy. I also think everything that led to the most successful moments in my life and led to this moment today is seeing the little bit of opportunity and going all in on them. Making the sacrifices of not only leaving my hometown that I felt completely chained to in every way, but saying goodbye to all of your friends in hopes to do this one thing that you know you're good at. And that's it for now. Uh, I, I, I have a ton more stories from there to now, but you know what, we're gonna save them for another video. I don't like to get too mushy-gushy, but some days I do feel very appreciative, and it does make me wanna talk about things like this because it, it makes me feel like I'm putting the appreciation where it, where it belongs, which is with a lot of people in my life who influence me. Tony Hawk was a mentor to me, but I didn't even know him. He had no idea who I was. You can have mentors and inspirations with other people, and you can aspire to not only work with them, but hang out with them. There's so many sayings I feel like I could say right now, but life is about designing your own reality. It's about embracing the chaos of everything happening. It's about, I'm literally just saying the quotes off the grip tape that I had recently. It's about questioning tradition. It's about monetizing your art. By the way, we sold out of the grip tape in like 30 minutes, so thank you so much. I, I suck so bad at ordering the right amount of product for the Progress Daily brand. Uh, next time, I swear, I will try my best to three up the stock, but if it sold out in 30 minutes, three up might only last a couple hours, so. 10 up the stock? I don't know. I don't know the right amount to order. Anyways, I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this video. I know it wasn't very uh, adventure oriented. I just wanted to sit down at Central Park and tell a story that meant a lot to me. So I'll see you next time on this channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for following me everywhere. Take care, progress daily, and keep killing it. There's people walking by, so I don't want to be too weird. Bye.